Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. My name is Glenn and today we've got another review for you, this time of Fury Unleashed, written by a good friend of the channel, Dave Morris. So thank you very much to you, Dave. Fury Unleashed is a combo-driven roguelite set inside a comic book world. At a time where roguelite games are 10 a penny on the eShop, does this game do anything to stand out from the crowd? Well, thank you to the publishing team for the review code, and now, let's find out. He is losing his faith in me. I have to find out why. As you begin the game, the story presents its hero, Fury, and not the one played by Samuel L. Jackson. This one's more of a Chuck Norris lookalike, who is on a generic sounding quest through a jungle. That is until Mr. Doodle appears, and here is where the story stands out as it evolves beyond the pages of the comic book, as Fury needs to find out more about the creator by finding the monolith of Revelation. As the game progresses, you can see snippets of what is happening with the creator as it zooms out of the comic and onto a table to show things like a text conversation on a mobile phone or a comment section insulting the comic. It certainly is a unique way to present a story and provides context for why the levels have a different design each playthrough as the creator is going through a bit of a creativity crisis. Talking of the playthroughs, let's look at the gameplay. Fury makes his way through the panels of a comic book each chapter being represented by a double page spread. Your goal is to get to the end of the page to move on to the next one. Each room is presented as a different panel of the book. Some of them can lead you to a new panel and some are dead ends. Given that it is randomly generated each time and the map doesn't show you a room's layout if you haven't been there, exploration is the name of the game. It isn't just a matter of simple exploration though, as the game hosts plenty of enemies to fight. The game starts you off in a tutorial stage and shows you all the moves you need to know to get started. Jumping or double jumping is handled with ZL or B, shooting in front of you is done with ZR although you can aim with the right stick and there is a very handy auto fire feature as well. The L button is for grenades, the R button is for dashing, Y is for your melee attacks and the X button is for your superpower, use it to freeze enemies on the screen. Enemies range from skeletons that can shoot at you, to smaller creatures that jump or fly at you, and some of them can appear out of the ground when you get near. At the beginning of your runs they are easier to kill, but the further you progress, tougher ones get thrown in your path, including plenty of boss rooms that provide a challenge. As you play through you'll be collecting both black and gold ink. Black ink is like EXP, used to level up your character, whilst gold ink is your currency. You can find pictures floating around that can contain a new weapon or a stat boost, or characters such as the Gunlord where you can purchase new weapons or health upgrades for that run using the gold ink. There is some fun variety in these pictures, sometimes involving a challenge such as killing so many enemies in a time limit or maintaining a high combo. The game displays your current combo, resetting back to zero if you get hit or take too long between kills. That alone would usually be enough to make me want to improve my skills to get it as high as possible, but the game rewards you for having a higher combo, such as by giving you more black ink or other perks that you can unlock, including a shield giving you an extra hit when you reach a combo milestone. When you die, you have the option to permanently upgrade your hero with a skill tree. These include the standard upgrades you'd expect, such as extra health, grenades, or increasing the time you get to keep your combos. These upgrades will make things easier and you'll find yourself progressing further each time, but it's still not an easy game. You can adjust the difficulty to make it easier if you want, and you can also unlock two harder difficulties as well. As you'd expect from this type of game, luck does play a part in how far you get. Sometimes you'll just find the exit quickly, other times you'll end up going the wrong way. Even if you find yourself going the right way, you also have the choice of progressing to the next area or turning back to explore every panel in order to find more upgrades to make the rest of the run easier. But of course, you risk losing health as you fight your way through enemies, especially if you run into a boss room, which you can't leave until you beat said boss, but you can get a better reward for doing so. After three chapters, you face a main boss. Beating three main bosses unlocks the next comic book. There is also a local co-op mode that works really well. The camera follows player one, so player two can end up off screen on the bigger panels, but you can't leave a panel until both players are touching the exit. Online co-op is apparently being considered, but at this moment in time, it's not included. The gameplay is incredibly fun and addicting. It has some nice quality of life touches that add a lot to the experience, such as the option to fast travel to previously visited panels if you find yourself at a dead end. Gameplay receives 18 out of 20. Controls on the other hand feel very natural and the combat definitely feels satisfying and they receive 18 out of 20 as well. 
In terms of the game's visuals, they are based on a comic book art style as you would expect. The levels are presented as pages of a comic book and it never tries to hide this. The loading screen shows what size panels you're going to have on this page and you can always see the white borders to the panels when you near an edge. Sometimes when you kill an enemy, a word will appear such as splash and boom, but it doesn't happen as often as I would have liked. Maybe that's just the Adam West Batman fan in me crying out. As I mentioned, your character looks a bit like Chuck Norris at first, but you can customise your appearance. I tried my best to make mine look like Raphael from the Turtles. The enemies are well designed and the animation is definitely fluid, especially when it comes to the bosses. Now, I've seen plenty of giant spiders in games before and the way these ones moved really did creep me out. The times when the graphics really stand out though is when you have more of the story revealed, such as when Mr. Doodle appears as he looks like he's just been sketched by a pencil. There are certain areas and enemies that look like this too. Then when it zooms out to show you the tablet, it reveals the panel you are on is yet to be coloured in. The music in the game is very fitting and complements the gameplay. I enjoyed the main theme when I booted it up, hearing that metal music got me in the mood for slaughtering things. When entering a stage, I was greeted to some pan pipes and other such jungle-esque noises, appropriate seeing that it is set in a jungle. The sound effects provide some satisfaction when it comes to the melee attacks and you hear the slicing and the squelching as you chop through enemies. You will spend a lot of time hearing those bullets fly past you as well. Visuals are incredibly fitting to the theme and work very well. It scores 16 out of 20. Audio on the other hand again is appropriate, though perhaps not as impressive as the graphics and scores 15 out of 20. Fury Unleashed sells for £17.99 19 dollars or 19 euros 99 or 29 australian dollars 99. it has a 10 percent discount off of these prices until the 7th of june this is not a game that you'll be beating quickly as it does pose a great challenge and requires you to grind to level up your characters between runs it also catalogues all the enemies and items you've encountered even detailing how many you've killed and how many times you've been killed if you are a completionist then things like this will no doubt keep you playing and there is also an achievement system and there are leaderboards. The amount of variety the game provides also prevents it from feeling too samey between runs. And although you will start to recognise certain areas over time, the difference in what items and challenges you encounter and the difference in the level's layout can make it feel fresh. Even if you manage to blast your way through it, the game's description challenges you to try playing through the whole game on a single combo. Good luck with that. Value scores 17 out of 20. To conclude, Fury Unleashed is an incredibly fun and addictive game which is visually appealing and shows a lot of respect towards the player with all the options it provides you. It's always great to see a studio do something unique and the way they present this game and tell the story certainly is something special. You'll have a great time in single player or co-op and it's very well suited for portable play. The short burst nature of most of my runs just made me want to try one more time, with those being the golden words when it comes to this sort of game. This comic book style game is definitely one to marvel at. Fury Unleashed gets a switch up score of 84%. Thank you everybody for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. Please do remember to leave a like if you did. A huge thank you to Dave for writing this one for us. Dave has his own channel called Save Dex Gaming. I'll leave a link to it in the top pinned comment. Please do go and have a watch. And if you like what you see over there, maybe subscribe to him as well. Anyway, a quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming.